Suppose we told you that the water you drink, the air you breathe, pretty much everywhere is contaminated with plastic. Yeah, well, that's exactly what scientists at Utah State University have concluded in some new studies that they call alarming and shocking. Science and Nature Specialist John Hollenhorst now with the story. But where do you actually sample? Watershed scientist Janice Brainy and grad student Macy Gustavus go looking for plastic in very remote places. We're finding plastics everywhere we look, which is really concerning. They demonstrated how they collect samples in the high mountain headwaters of Blacksmith Fork River. Yeah, we find plastics in pretty much all of our water samples, if not all of our water samples. They also collect atmospheric samples on towers high in the mountains. And back in the lab, they look at it with a high power microscope. It's green, an unnatural green, so this is likely a piece of plastic. They're looking for tiny particles, usually brightly colored. You can see a blue particle right here, a green fiber, and some blue fibers. The plastic bits are, of course, microscopic. This one, just 38 microns. So this is four times larger than a red blood cell. Tiny. Tiny. Where does it come from? From plastic trash that we leave lying around in our environment. Over time, it disintegrates into tiny particles that become part of the dust that goes, well, pretty much all over the place. Cars and trucks drag it around and kick it high into the sky, particularly on rural interstates where everything is at high velocity. What we found is that highways are largely responsible for moving plastics high into the atmosphere. Way high, nearly to the jet stream, where the particles spread around the world in a few days. Brainy has published two scientific papers in the last year. At any given time, she says, more than a thousand tons of plastic are swirling around in the sky above western states. And it's landing everywhere, all the time. We have plastic that is coming from the sky right now and falling into the river. If all of this strikes you as a good excuse to avoid the great outdoors, there's some bad news. The microplastics problem is likely even worse indoors. It's more likely that you're exposed to more atmospheric or environmental plastics through inhalation inside, but the reality now is that you can go to the middle of the Grand Canyon and think that you're breathing clean, fresh air, but in fact you are also breathing microplastics there. Definitely, I think people should be alarmed um, that there's virtually no place on the surface of the earth that you can go that isn't going to be contaminated with plastic garbage. I think that's very upsetting. This little branch of science is new enough that it's hard to know how important it is. No one knows if breathing or drinking the tiny particles is any more unhealthy than all the regular stuff that floats around the earth. Since we don't yet know what the consequences are, but we're already at this state where the plastic pollution is quite intense and quite concentrated in really remote locations. So the science is a work in progress, but so too is the plastic pollution. John Hollenhorst, KSL 5 News, on Blacksmith Fork in northern Utah. That is fascinating.